Thank you for joining us. My name is Peran, and I am the artistic director of the Willie Street Chamber Players. That pretty much means that I do a lot of the musical organizing and planning for WSCP. You are tuning into the launch of WSCP's 2021 season with our first ever Virtual Community Connect concert. Uh, as a small ensemble in Madison, Wisconsin, we typically hold our concerts in the month of July. And our Community Connect concerts are our free commu educational community uh, performances. We have a delightful program for you and friends of any age. This program is made possible by the generous donation of our sponsors. If you like what you see, please consider a donation to WSCP to cover the remaining costs of production, either through our GoFundMe campaign or through our website. Diving right in. Our first question for you is, what do you picture when you think of classical music? Did Beethoven or Mozart come to mind? Maybe you pictured some big white powdered wigs or perhaps an orchestra? I'm guessing that what you imagined is probably close to what some aspects of classical music represent. We hope that today's program will provide a broader perspective on what classical music looks like today. We will be exploring music that isn't just written by dead white men from a long time ago and hopefully add to what you imagined and more. To start off, every piece on the program is written for a string quartet. A string quartet is made up of two violins, and one viola, which is, looks a little bit larger than a violin, and a cello, which is the instrument that's played seated that fits between your legs. Uh, the violins will be played by Eleanor Barch and myself, and the viola will be played by Kaylee Ackard, and the cello will be played by Mark Bridges and Lindsey Crabb. We will be performing five pieces by five composers, and a composer is a person that writes music, much like an author writes a book. And first up on the program is a piece called Strum, written by Jesse Montgomery. Jesse Montgomery is a composer, violinist, and educator, and is from New York City, where her father managed a music studio where she was constantly surrounded by all different kinds of music. Strum was written in 2006 and revised in 2012. It's called strum, which probably evokes the image of how you might play a guitar. Um, and its title refers to the guitar-like plucking of the strings that is prominent and the common thread for the whole piece. When listening to this piece, see if you can notice the different characters of the plucking that happen over the course of the piece. The opening begins with this sort of off the ground, uh, floating, humming, plucking. It quickly moves into this more grounded, groovy uh, plucking that sounds a little bit like da 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 It's really kind of fun and exciting. And then at other points in the piece, you'll notice that the plucking turns, to, turns out to be a little bit more playful and mischievous. Um, another thing to notice when you're watching the piece is to see if you can um, notice the different ways we play our instruments in the piece. The different ways we strum and pluck. In music, the term for plucking is called pizzicato. Um, before we play the piece for you, I have one last question. See if you can notice how we play the very last note of the piece. Do we use our bow or do we pluck it?
The next piece is called Metro Chabacano, which translates to Chabacano train station. This piece is written by Javier Alvarez. Javier was born in Mexico City in 1956. He then moved to the United States in 1980 and then moved to Great Britain where he lived for 25 years before returning back to Mexico. This piece was written in 1988. Metro Chabacano is a station belonging to the vast Mexico City subway system. Sometimes when a piece is titled after something specific, um, I personally assume it's a description of that specific place. But Alvarez explains that this piece, however, does not seek to portray the exact sounds and the visual aspects of the subway. So you might be thinking, what inspired him to call it Metro Chabacano? Well, Alvarez explains that he hears this piece like short cyclical journeys across fleeting urban landscapes. Metro Chabacano has a continuous rhythmic movement that is kind of of a medium tempo, but always feels like it's driving. We would call this continuous movement and rhythm a motor perpetuo or a per perpetual motion. And you can imagine this perpetual motion being the steady pulsing of the wheels of a train that you're sitting in. As uh, the motor perpetuo flows along in this piece, you will hear short little melodies played from different instruments that pop in and out. Sometimes the motor perpetuo is thrown off kilter a little bit through the use of rhythms, different rhythms and accents, and also through how he puts in these short little snippets of melodies. Um, have fun listening to Metro Chabacano.
Metro Chabacano took us on a journey on a train through a city landscape. The next piece is going to take us on a different kind of journey. Staying within our imagination, can you imagine what it might feel like if you were in a situation where you were wanting and needing to rest, but had no home or place to rest? How would that feel? It might be a little stressful, maybe a little scary, maybe a little sad. The next piece you're about to hear, called The Warmth from Other Suns, written by Carlos Simon, is about just that. This piece is based on the award-winning book by the same title by Isabel Wilkerson. The book describes the Great Migration, where many African Americans fled to the North hoping to escape the racist laws and oppression of the South. This migration was fueled by hope for a better life, but riddled with uncertainty. Not knowing what life would be like in the North, not knowing where you would live, and being exhausted from a grueling journey, and much more. This piece is made up of three movements. A movement in music is much like a chapter in a book. But in books, often there are a lot of chapters, and in music, we, there are often fewer chapters. And in music, the movements are often titled with something specific to either describe the movement or to give a character for what the movement might sound like. The first movement of Warmth from Other Suns, written by Carlos Simon, is called Rays of Light. And this movement is brought to you by the magic of harmonics. Harmonics are actually not magic, it's pure science and pretty exciting, but they sound really magical. And the sounds you're gonna hear at the beginning of the piece are uh, made up by pressing one finger down. If I just press this one finger down, it would sound like this. And the harmonic is created by gently touching with one more finger. And another way we make harmonics is just gently touching with one finger. In the opening of this movement, the high-pitched harmonics depict light breaking through clouds and reflecting and refracting in unusual and beautiful ways. The opening could be seen as a symbol of hope and opportunity. This cello soon joins in, though, with a much more emotional tune, one that is fearful, anxious, and even questioning. The second movement of Warmth from Other Suns is called Flight. The feeling of unrest and fear can be felt throughout this movement. Uh, this unrest is played out by jolting rhythms, um, a, some call and response you'll notice between the instruments, and there's also a fast-paced perpetual motion that also exists in this piece, in this movement. The third and final movement is called Settle. This short final movement echoes some material from the first movement. Settle also sounds like it attempts to answer the question of if this newfound place can be called home. What do you think? Does it sound settled to you? Have the anxieties of the journey settled and can you breathe? Thank you. 
The next piece is called Quijotadas, which is Spanish for extravagant delusions. Quijotadas is written by Gabriela Elena Frank and is based off of a book. El Ingenioso Hidalgo Don Quixote de la Mancha by Miguel Cervantes. And in English, it's the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote of La Mancha. This is the tale of Don Quixote, a middle-aged lesser nobleman who undertakes absurd adventures in pursuit of romantic and seriously outdated knightly ideals. This piece is a total of five movements, but we will only be playing the first two. The first movement is called Alborada, which is a Spanish song of welcome and beginnings. The first movement foreshadows the silly with the violins playing notes that sound a little lopsided and playfully twist your ear. The welcoming song involves only the two violins of the string quartet. The strings also are imitating the sounds of an instrument called the chifro, which is a small, high-pitched wooden panpipe. The second movement is called Seguidilla para la Mancha, which is a free interpretation of the spirited dance rhythms of Don Quixote's homeland, La Mancha. The opening of the second movement evokes two typical instruments, the six-stringed guitar and its older cousin, the banduria, which uh, finds its origins in Renaissance Spain. So in the spirit of strumming in this whole program, um, see if you notice the subtle differences in how we pluck our instruments in this piece, Quijotadas, compared to in strum. After the op uh, strummed opening begins the showdown. And here is where there are many kooky conversations. And there are kooky conversations between instruments and in pairs. And at one point, this conversation moves from being conversational to being confrontational and an epic but hilarious battle ensues. The opening strumming material, music, returns, but this time it is to escort us to an adorable ending. Remember, this, these two movements are only a part of a great, the greater work, so if you like what you hear, make sure to check out the whole piece. Quijotadas by Gabriela Lena Frank.
Caroline Shaw, the composer of the final piece on our program, is the youngest composer to ever be awarded the Pulitzer Prize Award at the age of 30. This particular piece is called Blueprint. A blueprint is commonly a plan for how to build something. And Caroline Shaw builds off of and quotes a string quartet written by Beethoven, specifically his string quartet Opus 18, number six. And she uses her own unique and beautiful musical language to do so. I love her ability to uh, deconstruct and stretch and morph music. This is the final piece on our program, and on behalf of the Willie Street Chamber Players, I would like to thank you for tuning in. Um, I'd like to leave you with a quote from Caroline Shaw that sums up why we get so excited to get together and play music, play and share music with you. Chamber music is ultimately about conversation without words. We talk to each other with our dynamics and articulations, and we try to give voice to the composers whose music has inspired us to gather in the same room and play music.